Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome back inside my girl room. Today is February 11th, 2014, and I want to do a quick follow-up video on this uh, this product here that I used. Uh, it's called the Enhancer by TNB Naturals. Um, and what this is, is it's a natural way to disperse CO2 inside your grow room, okay? And uh, I did a video on this, uh, I don't know, like two weeks ago. Uh, if you didn't see it, uh, go to my page or go to my YouTube channel and check it out, uh, where I talk a little bit about CO2 and its importance uh, for plants, especially in an inside environment like this where uh, CO2 is not uh, generated um, naturally, if you will, other than me breathing if I come in here and talk. Uh, that's why I shoot a lot of my videos in this room. Obviously it's to show you plants, but also it's because when I'm talking and letting out um, air, uh, CO2 is uh, building up inside this room and it's good for the plants, right? That's why when some people say, sing to your plants, well really that is, that's, that's you know, it's good for it, for them actually, because <laughs> they're getting CO2. They take that in, they give us oxygen back. Now, back to this product. Um, if you think, if you go back and look at my previous video, you may think I come across as a little bit dickish in it. And that is for good reason. And the reason is, is because I don't know what's in this product, and I do have a good idea, okay, based on looking at it. I won't say it on a video or, or anything of that nature, but I do believe I know what is in here. I don't know the exact formulations or anything, um, but the thing that really gets me on this is that it costs $39.99. Um, I am not growing anything in this room to sell. I'm consuming it all. It's vegetables. It's not dope. It's not the things I can sell uh, to the public for uh, food production, right? Because I don't make enough here. We eat it and consume it in here, right? So I am not going to like spend uh, $39.99 an hour. There is a caveat to this. I bought it on sale at a hydro store, right, for $30. Bucks. But still, they're asking $39.99 for this product, okay? That is a steep price to pay every two weeks to add some CO2 into um, into this environment here. So, I am um, going to follow the instructions on this bottle, okay? And the instructions very clearly state, it says recycle the canister. And their interpretation of recycle the container is very different from mine. I assume that they would want me to put this in my recycle bin and um, do away with it and then go buy more. I'm not going to. In fact, I'm going to set up my own little CO2 thing and I'm going to recycle this container. So if you are going to buy this product, I would suggest buying it once and then recycling the container, okay? Support the nice company, right? Support them, all right? But I, I, I'm not gonna buy this product at 40 bucks a pop every two weeks. There's cheaper ways of, of coming up with CO2 um, in your grow room. So, what am I gonna do, okay? Now, a yeast and sugar mixture will um, produce as a byproduct CO2. I don't know if that's what's in here, okay? But, um, and I don't know, and if it is, I don't know what the exact formulation is, okay? Again, I'm speculating. But, uh, there are videos out there on this very same process. Uh, there are tutorials online. I think on my previous video I have a link to an eHow um, video that, that clearly uh, displays the directions of how to naturally add CO2 into your environment. And basically all of them are the same method, if you will, of doing it. It's a yeast-sugar combo. Um, you, what you're going to do is, is you're going to put sugar in the bottle, in a two-liter bottle. You're going to have some type of venting so that when the yeast activates uh, and starts consuming the sugar, and as a byproduct, the, um, the CO2 comes off. It needs a way to vent out, obviously, to get into the atmosphere. And this bottle here has that same thing. It's a, a in, it's got a fancy little lid on it, but what's inside this lid is a bottle cap, and it looks like they probably heat, heated up a, a sewing needle or something, and they put a little hole in the top. So that's how it disperses out. Now, 
uh, uh, one fun fact about carbon uh, dioxide or CO2 is that it is lighter than air. That's important, okay? If you look on the tutorials online, uh, you will notice that a lot of these people will have this exact same setup, only what they'll do is, is they'll hot glue a piece of uh, tubing to the top of it and it'll come out. And what they do is, is they'll run that tubing all the way up to the top of their plant and then back down. So the CO2 will go up the tubing and come back down. And as it's floating back down in the atmosphere, hopefully your plant is taking it in. Okay, so what I did to alleviate that is I set this bottle uh, in front of a fan and I'm letting the fan circulate it around my tent. Okay, now I don't know if it gets up in the upper atmosphere of the tent. Uh, I really don't know, to be honest with you, but uh, at least it's circulating around in this room. So, let's get busy. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up my own little CO2 container using this repurposed bottle from TNB Naturals. Big shout out to them for creating this bottle. Uh, most expensive pop bottle I've ever bought. So, what am I going to do first? Uh, I'm going to add a cup of sugar into this bottle, okay? Uh, because... The yeast needs to eat, and it needs to eat sugar. So plain white sugar, one cup. I'm going to put it in here. I got a little funnel here so I don't make a mess everywhere. Okay. And let's jack that right back into the bottle. I might add too, as this is um, filtering back into the bottle, I might add that I did clean this bottle out, and I did pour a little bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide into it. Swish it around, make sure it killed any bugs or anything that may be left over in this bottle. And then I drained it out and dried it, okay? So I, I did sort of quasi-sterilize this thing just in case, you know, something was funky. Next on the list, maybe I'll just put this here. Can you see that? You can see that. Cool. I will put this here. Next on the list is, is you want to put the yeast in, okay? And this is really what generates the CO2. Now, there are multiple different kinds of yeast on the market, right? You've got baking yeast, brewer's yeast, there's a thing called champagne yeast out there, okay? And the brewer's yeast and the champagne yeast are able to um, withstand higher levels of alcohol content. Okay, as a byproduct of this um, uh, process that's going on inside this bottle, okay, the yeast is eating the sugar, as a byproduct, again, the CO2 is coming out, and what's left behind inside the bottle is alcohol. Okay, so um, baker's yeast does not withstand a high amount of alcohol, but it's all I have in the house right now. When I go to the store, I'll get some brewer's yeast, and, and, and we'll do that. Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that for, for a couple of reasons. One is that the higher the alcohol content in the bottle, uh, the lower the lifespan of the yeast, okay? So if you're going to use baker's yeast, it's not going to last as long as a brewer's yeast or a champagne yeast, right? So I would venture to say like a brewer's yeast or a champagne yeast is going to last 10 to 14 days, right? Whereas a baker's yeast may only last 6 to 7 days, okay? And then it's going to turn to alcohol, kill off the... the remaining yeast in the bottle and it's done and then you have to flush it out and start over. But I don't think that's a big expense. I mean when you're talking about a dollar packet of yeast and probably 25 cents of sugar, right? Uh, a buck and a quarter every week, let's say 250 every two weeks. Now this product sells for $39.99 retail and I would have to replace it every two weeks. You do the math. Um, now, I don't know if this is going to put out the exact concentration of uh, carbon dioxide. That would be a good test, right? But I don't know if this is going to put out the exact concentration of carbon dioxide as what was in this product, whatever it was. Um, but 80 bucks compared to $2.50 every two weeks, I, I'm going to go with this method, okay? Because it is going to disperse CO2. How do you know it's dispersing CO2? That's another good question. Well, if this was a clear bottle, you'd actually be able to see it bubbling, right? You, if you've ever started off bread um, and you've, uh, uh, there's a word for it, um, proof, not proof, 
anyway, you put your yeast in warm water and you let it sit and activate, right? You'll notice like you'll start to get some frothy foaminess at the top, you know, and then you add your flour in to make your bread. Same principle here, guys, that you'll be able to see it bubbling. And as long as it's bubbling, it's active and alive and it's dispersing CO2. Well, in this particular bottle, it is not transparent. It is painted gray, right? So you can't see it bubbling. All right? So you don't know what's going on in this bottle. However, what you should do with this bottle every day is once a day with the lights on, okay? It, because plants can only take in carbon dioxide, usable carbon dioxide, when there's light, right? Because it uses it for photosynthesis. When there's light in your room, Give it a little shake, okay? Give this bottle a little shake, okay? I mean, don't go bananas with it, but give it a little shake. And what you'll hear through this little pinhole is you will hear a, a hissing noise. And what that is is that's the gas being released out. Now, it will disperse slowly without being shake, shaken, but it's a good idea to give it a little shake, get things mixed up in there, and you're going to get a boost of concentration in your room. Um... And then, of course, it will slowly disperse over time as well. All right. So, one cup sugar in here. I cut my fishing line with my teeth, too. It's just it's a habit I picked up from my dad. It's probably bad. I, get, I must have choppers or something. Everything, I tear it open with my teeth. I'm like an animal, right? All right, anyways. Baker's yeast in the hop. Pow. One packet. Let's go one packet. Hopefully this thing doesn't explode and blow up my room. The next thing that you need to do is you need to activate this yeast and you need warm water, okay? And you can get it out of the tap. Um, and, and so it says on this particular product right here, it says add very warm liquids, 120 to 130 degrees. Avoid liquids that are too hot to touch. It's important, okay? If you add too hot a water to this, the yeast won't bloom, okay? That's the word I was looking for for the bread thing, bloom. The yeast won't bloom, okay? Um, and when the yeast doesn't bloom, you're killing it. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your tap. You can measure it out if you want, or, or take a thermometer to the water if you want. This particular yeast needs about 120 to 130. I'm going to go run some hot water out of my tap real quick. Bring it back in here. I guess I could have prepared that before this video. Lucky you, I didn't. So, I'm going to cut out, come back in. Okay, welcome back. I've got my... Uh, four cups or one liter of water so I'm just gonna go with four cups okay again uh, you don't want it too hot you, and also you don't want it too cold right uh, it won't bloom if it's cold and it, you'll kill it if it's too hot so I'm gonna put my fingers in there it's lukewarm it's not too hot to touch um, again you can take like a meat thermometer or one of those zappy laser things and and, uh, and get a get an accurate, accurate readout, right? But, uh, we're not going to do that. So, what I'm going to do is now pour this in. Sugar, yeast, lukewarm water. I'm going to put my cap back on. And again, guys, you can do this with a uh, two liter bottle, right? Just poke a hole through the top of it, or even better, hot glue some, like, uh, some quarter inch tubing, some of that fish aquarium tubing stuff into it. You don't want the tubing in the water, right? You want it suspended in the, in the air portion of it so that as the gas is getting released, <laughs> It's, um, it's being dispersed wherever you point the tube, right? And you can actually do that, make a long tube, and take it from plant to plant to plant every day. So, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger over the hole and I'm going to give it a good shake, okay? I want the sugar to dissolve. I want the yeast to dissolve. I want this uh, nice and mixed up. Now, much like the directions on the bottle, 
that says, you know, in 8 to 10 hours after the first shake, it'll start to continuously disperse CO2. Same principle here, right, with this method. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to take some time for it to activate. Now, a uh, baker's yeast is going to activate a little bit faster, right, because uh, it's who wants to wait 10 hours to make a bread type of thing, right? It's, all right. No, it's not over full, and it's warm, and it's going to start generating some CO2 here shortly. So, I, it's going to take some time. I don't know the exact time. This is my first time running at this. But again, this is going to take, uh, I don't know, uh, a couple of, I don't know. Uh, probably a couple hours before it starts to hiss, all right? And it's not going to be like a continual crazy hiss. It's just, it's it's going to just, as, as the pressure builds up in this, it's going to come out the hole, okay? So it's not going to be like blowing up the place. Trust me, all right? This is only spitting out a, li a limited amount of CO2. But it is good for the plants, man. And, you know, I should I guess I should have started out the video. If you watch my first video on this, uh, I should have started out this video by saying, um... Uh, that I did mention that I was going to take some before and after pictures, right? And if I didn't think it was doing the plants some good to add some CO2 into this, then I probably wouldn't even be going to the trouble of doing this in the first place. So, what I'm going to say is this. Did the product from TNB Naturals work? Did it disperse CO2? I'm going to say, and, and did the plants respond to it? And I'm going to say yes with a but, okay? I'm going to say yes in the fact that in this room, it, it, there, there's a multitude of factors going on. One is the ceiling's open, okay, so air can come in and out of here, right? So it's not like a trapped environment. Two, this is not a test area. In other words, I didn't run two grow tents, one with CO2 and one without. So I can't tell you specifically 100% that my plants responded like crazy on this, okay? I noticed a difference, but the, the, the thing is, is the caveat is, is what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that I don't know if, if it's just from natural growth, from, the, from what would happen normally in here without this product, um, or if this product actually did provide me um, some benefits, okay? I, I got a lot of growth in the last, I don't know, week or two on my pepper plants, on my tomato plants, okay? And I'll show you some before and after pictures, and I'll close that video out with, with, with that. I will give you the, the what, what took place on January 30th when I started this, and I'll take, and then I will show you the pictures from today, which is February 11th, okay? And so I did notice a difference. I think, all right, I don't think it was just because of natural growth. I think adding the CO2 into this room did make a difference. Now, uh, am I expecting peppers, uh, plants to grow to the ceiling out because I'm adding CO2 on this? No. Am I expecting uh, uh, more growth, a little bit more growth? Yes. Am I expecting healthier plants? Yes. Um, and, and do I think adding a little bit of supplemental CO2 into this grow room is good? Yes. And there are cheap ways of doing it. Give this a shot, guys. Let me know what you think. Um, like my uh, like this video if you like it. If you like to hear me ramble and, and just sound crazy, right? If, if, if you want to follow my channel, please subscribe, dude. I'm not here to make money. I'm doing this as a hobby. I'm showing you what you can grow indoors if you so choose. Uh, again, I, I live in Michigan. I can't grow anything this time of year outside, and that's why I grow in here. When, when uh, spring hits, dude, this room's going down, and I'm going outside and gardening. Okay, so grow your own food, guys. Grow some of the grow some of your own food. Don't rely on Monsanto and Big Box and all that crap, okay? Just plant a seed and let it grow. Alright, give it the right environment, give it some light, give it some nutrition, give it some CO2. Alright guys, let me close out with the with the pictures. You tell me if you see a difference. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. I, everyone's a little bit crazy. Just I might be a lot crazy, okay? So let me know what you think. Uh, please comment. Check it out. Peace. Boom.